Hello, welcome to another vlog. Do I have chocolate on my face? I just had the, the most intense chocolate banana bread. I had had melted dark chocolate all through the middle of it. It was amazing. Anyway, hello, it's Monday afternoon and I am doing the Gone with the Book Readathon because I think this month is gonna be the only month I'm gonna be able to do it. So I wanted to vlog it, of course. I have four books here. These four books are my to choose from because I've only got really four days to read it because I'm starting late, well, three and a half now. So I had to choose the ones that were quite small. Um, I think I'm gonna do the Aussie pick. Oh, I do really wanna read The Great Gatsby, but I'm gonna choose The Harp in the South by Ruth Park. This is a series. Where's the rest of it? There's a few books in it. I don't know how many actually, maybe three or four. This is set in Sydney in the 1940s. Um, it's set in what is now a really flash part of Sydney. So it will be interesting to read what it was like in the 1940s. So yeah, I think I'm gonna do it. It's only a little fella, so I should be able to get it done. Ruth Park is a classic Australian author. She wrote a book called Playing Beatty Bow, which is just, like a total Aussie classic and got made into this really amazing movie that I watched over and over again when I was a little girl. So I haven't even read that book actually, or maybe I did it at school. Anyway, I'm going to pick this up. The other one I really wanted to read because I just haven't read it is The Great Gatsby and this awesome edition that I found in a used bookstore. But yeah, I think we'll, we'll run with The Harp in the South. So it's the Darcy family. Um, yeah, it's just all of the people in that family and the triumph of the human spirit over poverty and ugliness. So I'll start reading that soon. I'm in the middle of so many other books as well. I'm still reading Olive. Um, I got a good chunk of it read this morning. So I really do need to read this. And where did it go? And The Kelly Gang. I really need to read this. So yeah, of course I've got many books on the go and over committing myself, but I couldn't not read Gone With The Book Readathon. Um, it is quarter past four. I have to leave in sort of 50 minutes for this parent teacher thing and I have to get dressed. I put some dinner on, so there's that. The kids have gone for a horse ride. So I'm just gonna start it and see what I think. Maybe another half an hour if I have a quick read and just start to get into it because I'm really excited. I'm really excited about that and I haven't been this excited about a book in a long time. Oh, actually, that's untrue. I was really excited about Bar Tested Towers, which I'm still to read, and Olive, which I'm still to read, and The Kelly Gang, which I'm... Anyway, I'm not going to think about that. I'm just going to be irresponsible and start another book. So... I'll let you know what I think after my, what my first impressions are. That's right. I've just read the first chapter and it's bloody good. It just introduced us to the Darcy's and who I'm already in love with. Um, Mama and Huey and their two daughters and they rent out two of the rooms in this little townhouse they're in and so we um, met one of the other tenants and her son and the writing's amazing like amazing it is descriptive without being too descriptive um, you, you can feel the poverty you can feel the dirtiness, you can feel all the creepy crawlies coming out of the cracks. It's amazing. It's, yeah, I've c connected with it instantly. So, hooray. That's awesome. I do only have time for one chapter, though. I just squeeze that in. I really need to get going. Okay, I'll do dinner, get dressed, go to parent-teacher interview, go to gym, come home and read. That's the plan. <laughs> oh, what an afternoon. Oh, I'm so excited to have picked this up. I could sit with it for hours, actually. I don't know if you can see me, but maybe because the car's leaving in front of me. I've been to the parent-teacher interview, or whatever it was, the meeting, and now I'm just about to go in and do Pilates, and that'll be fun. So I did bring my book because there was some time in between, but that got taken up by Voxer Chats with my friends, so... I didn't get any reading done in this little space of time. 
Anyway, I gotta go out in there and develop some core muscles. I'll speak to you on the flip side. Oh my God, guys, I just finished Pilates. That's kind of the first time I've done that for a really long time. And my abs are already sore. Ah, home time now. Time to go back to my reading chair. Do you want to be in it? Mm, I don't think so. Why? <laughs> okay, I've made it to bed. Danny Cook's reading. Why don't you tell them what you're reading, honey? Jordan Peterson. What rule are you up to? No, uh, rule four. What's that? Uh, treat yourself like somebody who's worth treating well. Hmm. I like that. I'm reading. Compare yourself huh. with who you were yesterday and not to someone who, someone else who is today. Sorry. Compare yourself to who you were yesterday and not to who someone else is today. Ah, oh. right. So just run. Aim for progress, not perfection. Aim for progress, not perfection. Cool. Thanks, honey. It's a little takeaway for the first day of the vlog. Cool. Come on. I'm going to read this and fall asleep with it. And I'll let you know if I manage to read a big chunk. Please. <laughs> Two pages max. <laughs> Two pages max. He knows me too well. <laughs> Good night. In this book, Olive's father wrote her a letter when, which she found when he died and on the front it said for her to open when she felt very alone and now she feels very alone and is reading the letter and I think something as big is about to go down. I think there might be another child. I can't tell you because I'll spoil it but I think something big's about to happen. I love these moments in books. <laughs> Sat to record it. <sighs> it's been revealed. I'm not gonna tell you what it is, but the fact that the man who is writing this blamed his wife for it, for not providing a happy home for him, really annoys me. But anyway, you can probably guess what happened. Ugh, I just, there has been many times in this book where I have wanted to choke the man. Anyway, sign of the times, right? Um, there's more to it than what I'm sure you've surmised and, um, Unfortunately, a coincidence is involved, so that's left me kind of salty. I just checked in with my buddy Kate Howe on this one, so yeah, we only have sort of 60 pages left to go, so I'll keep reading it as my morning book um, because I can focus on it in the mornings, and yeah, I'm enjoying that. So yeah, it should be finished in the next few days. We will see. I'm not loving it as much as I'd hoped, which is such a shame. Anyway, uh, last night I read maybe two chapters of this. I'm now on page 38, so didn't get much done as predicted. Um, I'm still really enjoying it. A, a Chinese man has opened a fruit shop next door and he's um, surprising them with his kindness and with his knowledge of um, medicinal things. So that's been really cool. Um, it's fast paced, somebody has passed away. A lot's, a lot's happening in Surrey Hills in the 1940s for this family. I adore them. I adore the mother and father and their relationship with their kids. They're a very um, close knit family, which is nice. So yeah, I will um, yeah, I'll keep reading this today, that's for sure. I do need to catch up on a buddy read. I'm leaving Joe in the lurch a bit with the Kelly gang, so. I might do this this afternoon when I get some time after I finish work. Um, but yeah, I probably got, I'm going to read until seven o'clock and then start doing 
stuff. The kids are still asleep. Um, and yeah, just read a little bit more of this so I can get a bit done every day. Anyway, that's the update. I'll talk to you later on. Um, okay, I've decided to rearrange these bookshelves. They were all over the place. I've put all my uh, late 1800s, early 1900s up here. And then down here I'll put like, you know, post 1920, I guess. And then the sets and things. I've got my Agatha Christie's here and stuff. And yeah, then later on. So just sort of classics, modern classics, would that be right? My Australia shelves are filling up quickly. So when this bit's done, I'll have to um, work out a classics spot. But until then, we'll do this. I've got a little helper too. <laughs> Hi, I should be working, but we have no internet. Which doesn't make for a very productive day. I'm just eating chocolate biscuits. Um, so while I wait for the internet to come back on, I'm going to read. I'm going to read this and get up to date so I can check in with my buddy Joe who is waiting for me. If you hear not so our house is getting not re-stumped, but all the stumps fixed because every time you walk, it shakes. <laughs> and you know, always with these things, the you have a budget for it and then the builder shows up and everything's wrong and the budget is doubled so we just had that conversation so i really need to read to kind of calm down a bit because that's not much fun those conversations <laughs> anyway it has to be done the joys of buying an old house on black soil apparently the soil is no good for houses on wooden stumps because it moves and shifts very regularly. All these things you find out after you buy the house. Anyway, okay, so I'm gonna give this a read. I'll, I've got two parcels to read, so I don't know how many pages it is. Uh, probably a little over 80 pages, so. Okay, Jo, I'm gonna do it. I'll be with you soon. I'm kind of reading and kind of not jumping in and out of different things but I just was on Twitter and I remember that it's nonfiction November and it's also novellas in November so oh my area just came out so I'm going to um, go through my stuff and just see get some options together I don't want to do a TBR or anything I just want to see what I have what is a novella? What does, what's it classed as? Hang on, let me look it up. Let's look. This is an interesting exercise. Right, I just had to do some maths. <laughs> Never a good thing. But they said a novella is maximum 40,000 words. The page count is hard to determine. Um, I'm so tired. I was up way too early. I should have a rest, but the builders are here. Anyway. Uh, right, so maximum 40,000 words and I read somewhere just then that you can kind of get a guide and say there's 250 words to a page generally. So that equals 160 pages. So I'm just going to run with that. I'm going to go through all of these and find my novellas. I don't know if I'll have many. Anyway, let's, let's start the exercise. <laughs> Mrs. Harris book I bought ages ago. Ghost Wall is under 160 pages. Do I do it? Um, I got a palace. I got a heap out of my sort of translated fiction section, which is exciting because that's that's my happy place in there. This is set in Morocco, I think. It's translated from the French by Linda Coverdale. Yeah, right. I remember this. 
So Muhammad has lived in France for 40 years and at the end of his life, he returns to Morocco where he spends his life savings and builds the biggest house in the hope that his children and grandchildren will come and be with him. Sounds interesting. I got a Tim Winton, 50 cents. <laughs> Maybe I should take that off. This is from the perspective of Ort, a little boy who's got a family who aren't doing so well, it looks like. Um, even the blurb is written nicely. I do love Tim Winton's writing, so yeah. Look at this, on the inside of this cover is a, somebody won this for writing a great short story. How cool is that? I got this that I was supposed to have read ages ago. This was on that TBR pile. Um, yeah, this is a, I think it's a Korean fable. I gotta read this book. I love the cover. I got this Colleen McCulloch that I've put down. I think it's for the Reading Women Challenge for the year. Anyway, Colleen McCulloch's an Australian author. Plain young woman who shocks her narrow world as she transforms herself into an exciting enchantress and sets her sights on a handsome stranger. Oh, why does she have to change herself into an enchantress to get the attention of a man? He's not worth it. <gasps> This is gonna annoy me. Yeah, anyway, I've got that. Here's an Elizabeth Jolly. I don't know if you remember, ages ago I read an Elizabeth Jolly book um, and I loved it and I've been collecting her work. So this is, this is, I don't know what this is about. Oh, so it's the newspaper of Claremont Street, but the newspaper is a person who's a cleaner. That's her nickname. This woman cleans other people's houses, but dreams of living in the country and having her own farm. So that could be fun. There's this. I read an Alex Miller book earlier. He's an Australian author called Conditions of Faith. And I did not like it at all. It drove me nuts. Um, but this is about um, an artist and a subject. So a portrait painter paints this woman and they're drawn together. I, I don't know. I love books about artists, so this one. John Marsden book. John Marsden's an Australian author. He wrote a book called Tomorrow When the War Began, which is, you know, I guess it's, I don't know, what is it now? Why, hey? I don't know what tomorrow, it's like from years ago in the 80s. You grew up and you read it, or was it the 90s? I don't remember. Anyway, I should get my son to read that anyway. I can't even remember what it's about. He also has started a fantastic school in Victoria. It's near impossible to get into, um, but his views on education are what draw me to him now as an adult. Um, yeah, so I picked this up. Um, Winter is a girl and she's, um, for 12 years she has been haunted and now at 16 the time has come for her to act. I don't know. But like I said, I've not read John Marston since I was 14 or whatever it was. Here's another one from the translated fiction section. Um, yeah, this is an interesting one. How do I say that? This is German. Is it Nolp? Is that how I say that? Anyway, this Nolp is a man who is, well, they call him a, a vagabond, but he has no place of residence. He's dependent on his friends for hospitality. He doesn't want to tie himself down. Um, and then this story talks about his, you know, his relationships and his love affairs and he questions life. And it says, um, the final powerful climax at the end of the book, when God reveals to Nolp that the purpose of his life has been to bring a little nostalgia for freedom into the lives of ordinary man. So somebody doesn't fit into the society's boxes. We all know I like those books. So yeah, that could be it. This is another um, translated work by Night in Chile. This is Robert Bellano's first novel to be published in English. I can't even understand the blurb. Something about deathbed confessions. Something about a priest. Something about Opus Day. I don't know. I don't think I'm gonna pick that one up for an easy read. And then lastly, this is about a couple who fall madly in love and get married and they have a kid and it all goes away. Whew, that's relatable. <laughs> These are my no, um, 
what is it? Novellas in November possibilities. And it, you know, to tell you the truth, it's going to be really nice to pick up some easy books. Not easy books, that's the wrong word. Some sort of easy to get through books because these big Victorian novels, it's, it's taken a lot. While we're here, let's talk non-fiction November, shall we? I'll pop these up. Hang on. Sorry. We all know um, I don't read a lot of non-fiction at all, but I have this. <laughs> this is um, Helen Garner. There she is. An amazing Australian author. This is a compilation of all of her short non-fiction works um, and written over a period of almost 50 years so it would be cool to I don't know whether it's organized chronologically no it doesn't look to be so yeah they're all little um, stories that she's written and just put into this one big chunk of a book so I think I'm going to dip in and out of this and enjoy Helen Garner's writing. I've never read any of her nonfiction, but it's apparently just as good. So yeah, that's my nonfiction November plan. Anyway, now I'm gonna read that Kelly Gang book and check in with my buddy. That is a must do. I'm gonna finish it off, all that bit off now. I can't focus, I can't focus, nothing's going in. I've read one parcel, I've probably got 40 pages to go. So I'm just gonna pop it down here. Sorry Joe. I will try and do it this afternoon. I'm gonna read this because I love it. <laughs> I shouldn't have started this book before I finished my commitments. Story of my life really. Sorry Joe. Okay it's a bit later now. I made a video which was good. Um, I find this hard to read and I think it might be because I'm just super tired. I was up so early. I'm just not loving this section as much as I did the other. My issue with this book at the moment is that we've, we're that far in, like over halfway in, and Ned's still not doing bushrangery things. So this was about the Kelly gang and so far it's just been about Ned and really like we're just right now he's taking back dresses that were stolen by his brother and like just all this sort of stuff that's not bush rangery at all and i want to get to the nitty gritty so that's that's my issue with this at the moment i have sort of 40 pages left before i have to check in with joe but i'm gonna get dressed and go to the gym because oh this fly because i'm trying to be good i'll catch you after i've done that and i'm reading again I need to check in with Joe today. But the problem that I'm having is I also, like, what's today? Tuesday. I've got until Thursday to finish this. And I'm only up to page 47 out of a 230 page book. So I've got to get a crack on with this as well. Anyway, I've always overcommitted, I've always done those things. It's just the way it's going to work. I'm going to get ready, go to the gym. I'll talk to you um, when I'm done with all of that. Look at that sun, so brilliant. Just got back from the gym. It's half an hour core class, fast and furious. I'm very sore. But that sunset makes me happy to be home. I have someone in my reading room with me. This room's supposed to be a screen free zone, honey. <laughs> the irony. <laughs> Danny and I just celebrated me hitting a thousand subscribers. It's actually pretty cool. It is cool, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's pretty cool. Hi everyone. I don't think a thousand people watch each video, but yeah. hi. <laughs> What's cool about it is that I stuck with something long enough. I'm one of those people that starts things and doesn't follow it through, but this, I've been doing it for ages. Yeah, sure. Makes me a little bit proud of myself. Anyway, the gym smashed me. Like, smashed me. This cat claws. Spray, swipe, spray. Spray, spray. Hey. Scrabble, the scrabble. Uh, what I was doing when I was climbing up the mountain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Cow. Okay, kids are in bed. I'm in bed. It's not a good place to read, sit up and read a book for me, but I'm just gonna fall asleep with the harp in the south and um, I'll see you tomorrow morning when I'll let you know whether I got two or three pages read. <laughs> okay, everyone, good night. The jacarandas are blooming. Look how gorgeous they are. It's hard to see because of my dirty windscreen. Sorry about that. This is the main street of my town. I just find this time of the year so exceptionally beautiful. Oh, cars are breaking. I need to watch where I'm going. friends it's Wednesday afternoon I've just got back from picking up the kids from school so I've just been working went to the op shop this morning bought some books which um, yeah I should have showed you but I put them all away I bought some Agatha Christie's um, nothing really amazing um, and yeah I read so I'm about 10 pages off finishing this bad boy yeah, I'll just get to reading. I'll talk to you soon. I finally finished a book. Finally. <laughs> That's just been a long time coming, hasn't it? Um, I just checked in with my buddy, Kate Howe. So when I went into this book, it was about Olive and she was an artist and she was pursuing her passion and, you know, being a woman artist in a time where women were nannies and governesses and things like that. And so I was very excited. But very quickly this book turned into being about men and her art got referenced less and less until you know almost nothing she sat by her mother's side she had this love for Harold who was very self-centered um and she you know waited for him and yeah it was all about men harold went through a crisis she helped him through the crisis you know and then he took off overseas and she waited for him and it became this major love story in the end and i didn't want that i wanted it to be about her as an artist and what she did and how she rocked the art world as a woman and so the things i didn't love about this book were the things that i wanted it to be and you can't review a book based on that right because it it left a salty, like I was like disappointed in the book because I wanted a different storyline and that's not how we review books, right? I'm very aware of that. So my disappointment has kind of led me to understand that what I wanted for this book, this independent artist, woman, was never going to happen in 1850, right? And it's kind of been a bit of a jarring reminder of what a woman's role was in that time. And so that's been a really cool revelation like I've finished it I've gone through those motions of uh I wanted to know more about Olive and then I'm thinking well that was just never going to happen she she was always going to wait by his side hi I don't know what I was saying anyway I called it early and said this might be better than Gaskell I was so wrong I was so wrong um the writing is is wonderful and I really enjoyed this style of writing I found it more poetic more deep but in terms of storyline it still was really good actually if you take away the fact that I was disappointed because I wanted more from it so there you go four stars and at least I finished another book for Victober um now I need to like we've still got this guy and I've got today and tomorrow to finish it but I do need to get up to date with this and check in with my buddy Joe. I don't have that much more to go. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to get up to date and then I'm going to settle into what this vlog is about. <laughs> okay, leave it with me. I haven't um, read anything because I get distracted by YouTube. I watched a studio vlog. I'm a sucker for studio vlogs. And then underneath it was this Airplane karaoke with Kanye. You know how James Corden? Is that his name? 
Anyway, I watched those carpool karaoke's and he's done this thing with Kanye and there was this plane full of choir singers and Kanye's released this gospel album or something. He started a church or something. I don't know. It was amazing. It was amazing. I need to leave the link and I need to remember to leave the link. But, oh, God, if you haven't seen that, look it up. It was brilliant. I, I just thought about being on that plane like it was a full plane of a gospel choir. Holy smokes. Oh, I just had so much fun. And because I wasted time doing that, I've not read anything and now I need to sort dinner out. So, yeah, I'm a bit behind. <laughs> but anyway, okay, I'm going to do this. I'll let you know what I'm reading again. Sorry. Got him. Okay, much later. Dinner's done. Kids are in bed. Oh, one is. Um, and... I'm just waiting for my turn in the shower and then I'm going to climb to bed with the harp in the south. Sorry, Joe, I still didn't read Nick Kelly. <laughs> I'll do it tomorrow. Um, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm supposed to finish this tomorrow and I've still got how many pages left? I'll give it a good crack now. I'm getting distracted by booktube too. There's some good little vlogs going up. I love watching a vlog. If I don't see you later, good night. I'll talk to you in the morning. Oh, what a night, my friends. I am very glad that I signed off early because I had a sick baby yesterday afternoon and he spent all night coughing and vomiting. Not serious, but enough. You know, when they cough and you get them back to sleep and then you're awake for another two hours and then you finally get back to sleep and then they cough again, so you're up. <sighs> man, alive. he's fine. No worries with him. He's playing the cricket game, eating cornflakes. So I fear today's going to be one of those days and I really need to get some reading done because it is the last day of the readathon that I decided to do late. It's a full day and I've got to finish this book. And I've got to check in with my buddy. I'm going to do that now, actually. I'm going to check in with Joe. <sighs> Nothing like being under the pump, huh? I just got a message on that popped up on my Voxer from my buddy Michelle saying that she loved Far From the Madding Crowd, which she just finished. <gasps> oh, it makes my heart happy. It's such a, just, oh, oh, I'm so emotionally connected to that book. It's not funny. Okay. Me and my tired eyes are going to knock this out now. I think I've got time before I have to make lunches. So I'm going to knock this out now. Check in with you then. You're not going to believe this. I, I, I still have one more parcel to go before the check-in. I didn't read it properly. I was just listening to Jo's message that she left and she started talking about parcel nine. I was like, oh, I haven't read that yet. Then I worked out what I'd done. Oh dear. The Ned Kelly book is going, it's very easy to read, but the book itself is not fast paced and I'm finding it a bit of a, not a chore, but just, it's not capturing me because it's kind of harboring on, you know, Ned meeting a girl and I guess his relationship with the police is pretty interesting, but anyway, it's not as exciting as I want it to be. I need some action. Okay, I just thought I'd let you know my buddy read fail. I'm going to go make lunches now. So tired. I did the bare minimum of work. I just need to get some sleep. I think I would have had about four hours sleep last night and I just, I can't function. Everything's foggy. So I'm going to take my book and I'm going to lie down on the bed. I've got about, it's 11 o'clock. So I've got about three hours to punch some stuff out. Do this, I'll let you know how far I get. I, I, you know, I could finish it in three hours if I read solidly, but... I'm probably going to fall asleep. And also there's, you know, booktube to watch. Books and Lala, she just put up a new vlog. I love her vlogs. So I could totally need to watch that. I need to rest. Tonight is Halloween. It's a big night full of kids and sugar and you got to have energy for that shit. Okay. <laughs> Bye. I'm going to this sleep This is a now. dangerous position, isn't it? But it must be done. Wish me luck to read more than three pages before I fall asleep. <laughs>
So I'm sitting up now and I'm going to get stuck into this book. I read like five pages before I dozed off before. You're not going to believe what I've just done. I've got this whole afternoon, including an hour to sit at cricket training and I forgot my book. I never forget my book. I was on the phone as I was leaving the house. Can't believe it. I have no book. It's, I'm feeling like I'm in a crisis. And I don't think I have time to go back out and sort that out. Oh no. All right, so now I have to go and get fuel in my car because I've got an empty light. I've got to go and get Halloween buckets. I've got to go get my kid, and one kid, and give the other kid his Halloween costume because he's going to a mate's house. And then I'm going to take the other kid for afternoon tea, then to cricket training. Then he gets dressed in his Halloween costume and we go to Halloween with all their mates from school. And then we need dinner. What are we going to do for dinner? We need dinner and then home. I really need to find a service station. <laughs> Otherwise I'm going to be on the side of the road. This is the face of a parent who's been trick-or-treating with their child and then has had to watch them shove bucket loads of sugar into their heads, race around on streets with cars driving everywhere and now has had to kind of contain them in one room and put food in front of them and threaten their lives if they don't eat something substantial before they go to bed. This is, this is what that looks like. Halloween, man. What the hell? Because of all of that, and because I did take my book with me, cricket training was a mess. Like, just all of the stuff, I'm just not going to be able to finish my book, which is where, here. I just didn't put in enough effort during the day, and, oh, it's just all, it just all went awry, again. That's what I should just be called. My channel should just be called, you know, don't follow through. Plans never work. That could be the name of my channel. Anyway, I'm just gonna end the vlog because it's the end of Gone With The Book Readathon and tomorrow is the 1st of November and I need to start it afresh. There's gonna be a vlog coming very soon We're gonna, where I'm gonna finish a heap of books. So I did finish all of this vlog, didn't I? But that wasn't the point of the vlog all over the place. Okay, I'm gonna sign off and I'm gonna see you in the next vlog. Bye guys.